Hello, Stephen Schaub here, the leader of the Fidget Revolution 2.0 here on YouTube. And today we're gonna do uh, a video on converting an RGB image, whether it's a scan or an image from your digital camera, and how I convert those images to grayscale. Um, but first, before we get into that, if you have not subscribed to the Fidget Revolution, please subscribe today. If you have subscribed, thank you. And be sure to share this channel with as many photography friends as you have. The more people we have here, the more voices we have here as part of our community, the better the conversations are gonna be. And I have exciting news, we now have a new Patreon page set up. So if you can support the revolution, thank you, please do um, take a look at it. But for right now, let's get back to the video at hand where we're talking about converting an RGB image into a grayscale. Uh, the first thing you need to know is there's a thing called noise and for sake of just simple explanation, think of noise as a little bit like digital grain. Scanners and digital cameras both have noise. Um, noise can become really uh, visible in digital cameras if you go to really, really, really high ISOs. A lot of digital cameras have noise reduction software built into it. Certain scanners, depending on your color space, depending on the, the dynamic range of your negative or transparency, are sometimes prone to producing noise. But the good part is we know that noise primarily ex exists within the red and blue channel. The green channel of most scans or of most digital files is pretty clear. Okay, so now that we know that noise exists primarily in the uh, red and blue channel, we want to make sure that our grayscale conversion is going to emphasize as much as possible that clean channel, that green channel. So let me just outline the basic techniques of converting to grayscale and we'll talk about the pros and cons right off the bat. So the easiest way to convert this image to grayscale would just be going image uh, mode grayscale and turning it into a grayscale image. The disadvantage to this technique is that it's taking a portion of red, a portion of blue, and a portion of those green channels and turning that into our uh, grayscale image, which really is not gonna be maximizing um, our file. We're not getting the nicest, cleanest, smoothest conversion. So that's not a technique that I advocate. Uh, another technique that a lot of people like to use when converting to grayscale, which I also don't really love, is using just adjustment black and white and you can go in here and you can choose some preset filters, like this is what a green filter would look like, this is what a red filter would look like, this is what a yellow filter would look like, and you can go through and adjust the sliders and get it however you want. This is also not my favorite way of converting because once again, you're still using all three channels in this conversion process, and that's just not gonna give you the best grayscale. Another technique that a lot of people like to use is channel mixer. Now this one's interesting. In Channel Mixer, if I go to the very bottom here and I click the word monochrome, this gives you a monochrome conversion and you can see what Photoshop is doing. They're using 40 points of red, 40 points of green, and 20 points of blue in order to make that 100% grayscale conversion. But what we really want is 100% of green and none of the other two. So what's nice is I can come in here now and turn the red to zero, the green to 100, and the blue to zero and now I've got a conversion that is only using the green channel which once again in most scanners is going to be your cleanest channel and also in most digital cameras is going to be your cleanest channel as well. So this is a technique that I advocate for a lot of people for converting uh, their grayscale, uh, their color images into grayscale. You just get a really nice uh, conversion using this technique but it's not the version that I use all the time. Um, let me show you a technique that I like better, uh, and I'll explain why in a minute. Okay, so here we are. We're back to our color image. If I'm going to convert this image to grayscale, what I want to do is I want to separate the luminance, think the brightness range, the brightness from black to white, from the color or the chroma. And the way you do that is by going into lab color. So if you go image, mode, lab color, what happens is over here in our channel palette, you can see you've got lab and under lab there's lightness and then you have A and B. So you have the ability in lab to go in and turn off A and turn off B. What you're left with is just the absolute clean, beautiful luminance values of the image without the noise of the chroma in A and B. This is the technique that I use 
for 99% of my conversions to grayscale. And after I turned off A and B, only leaving the lightness or the luminous channel active, I go image mode grayscale. Now you'll notice the image changes just a whisker when I hit grayscale. And the reason is it's now going into a 2.2 gamma. That's what I have selected for my grayscale contrast. So if you have a different contrast set there, it'll change into that. But this to me is an absolutely gorgeous grayscale conversion. It's clean, it's beautiful, it's noise free. And this is the technique that I use 99% of the time. So let me go back through and I'll show you once again how I just did that. So you've got your color image open. You go image mode lab under your channels palette, turn off A and turn off B. A and B once again being all the chroma. What you're left with is simple, beautiful uh, luminous values. Now I know some people are saying, well, can't you just take an RGB image and just decrease the saturation? No, because in RGB, the luminous channel is linked to the chroma. It's not, it doesn't have an ability to be separated. This is why if you've ever noticed when you increase saturation on an image, the image also increases in contrast. That's because the luminance and the chroma are tied to each other. Same thing is true if you try to decrease the saturation, the image becomes flat. Because once again, the luminance and the chroma are linked. In lab color, they're separate. And you have the ability to separate them this way. So then all you have to do, once again, I've turned off the A and B, just go image mode grayscale, and I start to work on the file from here, and I get just the absolute cleanest, best grayscale uh, files to work with. But let's talk about another creative possibility here. So let me undo grayscale, let me undo lab. Here's another technique that you can do, and you need to do this technique with great care because it's really easy to make stuff that feels funky, but I think you'll see why in a second why I think it's kind of cool. You could do a multiple channel mixer using the channel mixer to create different types of grayscale filtrations all in one image and then do the lab afterwards. So let me show you this possibility. Let's say I wanted to come in and I wanted to affect, I'm just gonna use the lasso here because I'm feeling lazy. Uh, all of this area here, you know, a lot, lot of uh, greens going on in here. I'm not being real specific. And then I'm gonna feather what I just selected. Let's say like 50 points be fine. Okay, so I could now go image adjustments. Uh, and just to keep it really simple, I'll just choose that black and white they talked about before. And I can come in and say, I wanna choose this entire background as infrared, or I wanna choose it as yellow, or I wanna use it with a red filter, or I wanna use it with a green filter. I can do any one of these different type of filtrations for just this area. So imagine if you're out west and you've got big, beautiful blue skies, I could go in and do like a red filter or some mix to make an orange filter and have that sky be dark, but not have it affect the foreground here where Eve is at and do a different channel mix for this section. So let's just say we like this particular filter. And then I'm gonna go, just to keep this really easy, I'm gonna say select inverse. So now I'm working here on this lower area and I'm gonna go image adjustment. We'll keep it once again simple, go back to black and white. And I'm gonna say for down here, I wanna work with a yellow filter or some combination of that yellow. So here's sort of the mix of a yellow filter, uh, a red filter, I'm not probably gonna like as much. Uh, let, let's, or infrared's not gonna be great. Let, let's just stick with the yellow filter and I'm gonna say okay. And then I'm gonna say select, deselect. So the background is all mixed for a green filter. The foreground is mixed for a yellow filter. And then all I have to do, once again, is go image, mode, lab, come over to my lab palette, turn off A, turn off B, and then go image, mode, grayscale. And once again, now what's cool is I've got an image that's using two different types of filtration to get the black and white contrast and the black and white look that I like. And then by doing that lab technique for converting to grayscale, I'm getting once again, just that absolutely clean, smooth uh, image that, that, that we really want from a grayscale file. And then I can come in and mess with you know, curves and all sorts of stuff. And, uh, and create sort of the contrast palette that I'm looking for. But these are the techniques that I like to use when I'm converting to grayscale. Um, once again, I, I don't like just the simple going to grayscale. I like the idea of having the luminance separate from the chroma. You're just gonna get the best possible grayscale conversion. Now, 
is it a huge difference? The answer is no. Very few things in photography are huge differences. They're all little differences. You know, one lens is a little sharper than another. One paper is a little sharper than another. One ink has a little more DMAX than another ink. This technique produces a little cleaner file. It's all those little tiny things that add up that really give you a winning final image. And so it's just, you know, figuring out that, that, that sort of workflow, figuring out that sort of formula that gives you the best possible images to work with. So thank you very much for listening. I can't wait to hear your thoughts. Now go shoot some film. Oh, wait a minute. Don't go anywhere. I had one more thought. I was sitting here uh, finishing up the video and I realized that I'm sure someone's going to ask, hey, Steve, why don't you just scan the film in the first place in grayscale? Um, and there's an easy answer to that. When you scan a film in grayscale, the, the scanner software is actually scanning the file in color and converting it to grayscale uh, on its output. So it's doing the same thing that Photoshop does. It's using a percentage of red, a percentage of blue, and a percentage of green in order to uh, make up that grayscale file. So you're better to scan it in color and then selectively use the channel that you want. And additionally, let's say you're scanning a black and white negative because um, this applies to black and white film as well. Black and white film, truly just using the green channel and channel mixer is a wonderful solution or using the lab process that I outlined. That, in my opinion, still is really the best.